What's up, core reporters, and welcome back to my channel. Disgraced teen mom next chapter star Ryan Edwards has fallen in love. At least I think he has. Anyway, he's dating. He's in a relationship with a woman that he met in rehab. Listen, I have never been to rehab, but I've watched some shows or movies that have talked about this. And I'm pretty sure that they typically say that when you're recovering, you're not supposed to get into a relationship because there's just so much going on at already for you emotionally, mentally, and physically that if you break up with your partner, that can just send you just, um, you know, backsliding on all of the progress that you've already made. Because I believe a lot of people who have substance abuse issues are abusing substances to mask some of the pain that they're going through. So why introduce the possibility of going through more pain and needing to medicate it, potentially needing to medicate it again, right? While you're still in the midst of recovering. Anyway, it's the US son that broke the story. They're claiming that his girlfriend's name is Amanda Connor. And boy, oh boy, does she have a rap sheet pretty similar to Ryan's rap sheet. Unless, well, if you take out the stealing stuff, okay? So she's into theft a bit as well, but outside of that, like she does have similar substance abuse issues to Ryan Edwards. We will be running down through her arrest history. And you know, one thing that I like noticed when I was like reading all the stuff that she had been arrested for and how all of that panned out, what she had been sentenced for and whatnot, I went, you know what, maybe the, the, the courts there are just super lenient and it might not just be about Ryan and his family knowing the judge and being close to the judge and the judge's child, right? So let's get into some of what is being said here, okay? So apparently Amanda's criminal career started in 2009, you guys, and this was in Hamilton County. Their court website claims that some of her arrests include theft under $500, which was in February of 2009, where she got a suspended sentence of 11 months and 29 days, was placed on probation, probation, and then in 2016, June of 2016, she got that itch again. Is that what you call like a kleptomaniac or something like that? She got that itch again and then she got into stealing and she got the exact same judgment. But something that I find strange about her receiving a suspended sentence twice is that I'm pretty sure a suspended sentence was supposed to kind of like scare you out of doing something again, right? Like typically when you get a suspended sentence, it means, okay, like you're supposed to be getting this but we're not going to give it to you right now. It's only in the event that you get up to this, you know, foolishness again, then you'll have to actually serve these 11 months and 29 days or whatever. So it is quite strange to me that instead of actually like having to serve those 11 months and 29 days, she receives the same thing, a suspended sentence. Hmm. Very, very interesting, right? Then a couple months later, in September of 2016, Amanda gets arrested for possession of a controlled substance and pleads guilty. And then, surprise, surprise, for the third time, except this time it's not a suspended sentence, she was actually sentenced to 11 months and 29 days of jail. And then in August of 2017, which is pretty much like exactly as she gets out of jail, she was arrested again for possession of controlled substance again. She pleads guilty again. Listen, why is this woman constantly pleading guilty? Do they not have public defenders here? Like she doesn't want to have put up a fight, like nothing. She's just like throwing her hands up all the time and saying, all right, just lock me up. Like I do find that to be quite odd as well. She was ordered to a rehab center called Cadis Rehab. And so this time perhaps rehab helped her out because it wasn't until four years later in November of 2021, so almost five years later, that she was arrested for possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of controlled substance and registration, misuse of evidences. And this time, I guess she got some fight in her because all charges were dismissed in April of 2023, although it's not yet clear how she managed to get those charges dismissed. Now, <laughs> she's not done, you guys. Um, she also was charged with attempted fraudulent use of credit or debit cards in May of 22 as well. Um, then she got, um, like, it seems like I think four times at this point, she got that same sentence of 11 months and 29 days um, being uh, suspended and not suspended this, that, and the other. Then in June of 2022, she was arrested for driving under the influence 
possession of legend drugs. Guys, what's a legend drug without prescription? So I guess this is something that, why, why wouldn't they just say prescription drug? I don't know. Possession of paraphernalia, possession of controlled substance, and other traffic-related charges. And so she pled guilty to the DUI and was sent to Cadis Rehab in July of 2023. And this is where she met uh, Ryan Edwards. And so the U.S. Sun has published this photo of the two of them walking around together. I believe they were on a restaurant date of sorts. And I got to say, it makes me sad to see him like dating at this point. Like, I think that he should focus on trying to kick his habit, right? Like this man cannot stay sober to save his life. And people have literally had to save his life and revive him on at least two occasions that we are aware of. Yet he's out here thoughtin' and bopping, looking for girlfriends. And he so what exactly does he need to have a girlfriend for at this point in his life? I think he would be much better off working on himself and trying to stay sober for at least, I don't know, a year or something like that, trying to get through his divorce, trying to like, I don't know, I'm sure he got fired from his job at this point. So perhaps trying to like get a new job, like anything but this. I really don't understand why some people put like relationships on such a high pedestal that they have to constantly be in one, even when their life is in like complete and utter shambles. Like this man is barely surviving from day to day. And when it comes to Amanda, I am quite worried for her that she would want to get with somebody like this, but at the same time, given her own like record and history, like it, it's not at all surprising to be honest with you. Um, but it is concerning nonetheless. I don't think any woman should be open to dating Ryan Edwards after the way he destroyed his family home. You know, like it's already bad enough if you're just doing this to your ex-girlfriend or ex-wife or whatever. But the fact that he could do this knowing that this is where his children live and sleep and like this is the all the, all they have in terms of stability with the way that this relationship has gone like he would take that away from them and completely destroy their home and leave them stranded like that is that is terrifying that is truly 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 terrifying to me you know worse than anything um and so I, I don't know. I, I think that Amanda could stand to make better choices as well. She as well seems to have an issue with sobriety, with oh, stealing and stuff. So maybe she should just give herself a challenge. I'm going to go to maybe, I don't know, 10 Macy's stores or 10 Target stores and not steal a single thing. And if I could do that, then maybe, just maybe, I can start dating, not get into a relationship but start dating a little bit. Then if I can go to 20 targets or Walmarts or whatever you guys have over there um, without stealing or maybe stealing just one little lip gloss, I can go on my second date. You know, just start building the blocks a little bit slowly before jumping into a full blown relationship, especially a relationship with a man who could do this to his own children and his own wife. I don't think that this is a smart idea. Like I said at the top of the episode, I I understand two addicts, two convicts getting together in a relationship, right? Like they're going to be hard pressed to find quality people who will get with them outside of the, these histories that they have. But at the same time, I don't think that it's the best thing for them. I think that they need to just work on themselves individually and then once they've really, truly, truly gotten a hold of their lives, start moving forward. Because I think that they, if you thought Ryan was bad, and if you thought like her history was bad, just you wait. Like now that they're together, because Ryan at least had like a woman with a clean cl criminal background, right? And he still had all these issues. Imagine him in, with a woman who has a crazy criminal history, uh, a history of substance abuse like him. Like those two are going to be feeding off each other in the worst way. It's going to be a race to the bottom with them. If I were his parents, Jen and Larry, or a sibling of his or somebody, if I were a Macy to him, I would be begging him to get out of this relationship. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You guys are going to destroy what's left of each other. And it's going to be all too easy because there, it already isn't that much left of the two of you. 
it's just not going to be good, you guys. It truly, truly is not. I hope I'm wrong, but I doubt I'm wrong. Okay, you guys, I'm going to keep an eye on this relationship and on this situation. Lord, the amount of clingers that are like produced on this show is wild. They cannot be alone for more than five seconds. Remember, Ryan, when he first married Mackenzie, he was already on Tinder looking for coochie, asking women how pink their coochies are and whatnot. Remember that? I remember. So like, it's just wild to me. He's still not yet divorced and he's already on to the next. And I think actually even a couple months ago, we saw news of him being on like Bumble or Tinder or whatever, trying to date again when uh, he first started harassing Mackenzie and before he caught that charge. Lord, Amanda, I've got the same advice to you. Don't get with this man. He's going to drag you down further. I, I would hope that you both are trying to turn your lives around and become better people. So just spend a little bit time, more time on that before you get into the dating world. But I don't think they're going to listen to me. So I might as well just end the video here. You guys, what do you think about this? Is it a good idea for Ryan and Amanda to be dating given their history? Or do you think that it's only a recipe for disaster? Make sure to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.